How did I end up living here in Los Angeles, California with a swimming pool in the garden, a jacuzzi in the garden, chickens in a chicken coop in my garden. And I've even got nice little sauna in here as well. I'm from Sunderland, England. And on this video, I'm gonna tell you how I got here, why I'm here. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get here as well. And if you don't know who I am, my name's Tony Jeffries. I'm an Olympic medalist boxer and it's 100 degrees out here. So I'm gonna be wearing these sunglasses. And this is my second YouTube channel where I'm gonna be uploading lots more videos kind of like this and lots of fight talk videos as well. So if you haven't already, subscribe to this. It's my second YouTube channel. So I've never really spoke much about why I ended up in Los Angeles and why did I move? 5,244 miles east of where I'm from, which is Sunderland in the northeast of England. What not many people from that area of the world really do move out of there. So I'm gonna tell you all about that on here. It all started with one of the worst experiences of my life in my eighth professional boxing match when I got lied to from my promotional team who told me it was a six round fight when really it was an eight round fight. I drew the fight and it was a terrible experience. And from then, I just thought, you know, I have to move. I need to get out of my hometown of Sunderland where I was training, I had to go somewhere else and go for a fresh start and get away from it all. After that horrible fight, I went on holiday. I come to Los Angeles and my promoter at the time, Frank Maloney, told me there's a great boxing coach out there called Tommy Brooks, who's actually training at Evander Holyfield. You should go there, check it out, meet him while you're there and see if that's the destination where you want to train. So I was on my holiday here in Los Angeles and I went and met Tommy Brooks and he seemed great. And you know, the buzz of being out here with the palm trees and the hot weather and living by the beach, it just seemed amazing. And you know, my wife was all for that. So we decided, you know, let's do it. So I had a handshake with Tommy Brooks after I went and met him and that was it. He was my new trainer. So I was training here in LA and I still didn't really think about moving here full time. And then I met a guy called Paul Kane who owns the Britannia pub in Santa Monica and I've become good friends with him. And he was like, Tony, you need to move out here. You should definitely come out here, get your green card and live out here. It's a different lifestyle, you'll love it. It's way better than Sunland, he used to always say. And I started thinking about it. And then he put me in touch with a lawyer called Candice in New York. And he says, email her, she'll get you a green card. And I still didn't really know what a green card was, which is your permanent residency. And my wife was all for it. She'd always wanted to move away from Sunderland and move to a different country or move to a different city. So she was all for it. So I emailed Candice and we went backwards and forwards a few times. She applied for my green card. Three months later, I got my green card, me and Sarah, or residence here in Los Angeles, California. And then we just moved here. You know, we didn't have a big plan, a big master plan. We just kind of moved here and went with the flow. But it was when we got our green cards, my hands got ruined from boxing. And it was time for me to call it a day. I was here for a few months and I realized that, you know, I couldn't fight anymore. I had to retire. And then we just kind of settled here. And it was great. But then it was like, now what? I'm a retired boxer with no qualifications. My wife is a red-chested nurse in the UK who can't get a job over here because she needs to pass a big test called the NCLEX to nurse in USA. It's a little bit different. So it's like, ooh, what do we do now? Then for the first time in my whole life, I went and did a job interview. Boxing from the age of 10 years old all the way through to now I was 27, a retired boxer, I needed to get a job. I went for a job interview at a gym in Beverly Hills called 24 Hour Fitness. And the guy there who interviewed me was a bit of a dick. I had some certifications for personal training and also I had an Olympic medal, which I thought maybe I will get the job. But the guy, when I went and interviewed, he put his hands on the back of his head, put his feet on the table, and he was like, yes. I was like, oh, mate, I'm a, a trainer. I want to help, you know, put a boxing class together maybe for your gym and help, you know, get members through teaching boxing. And he was sitting there like all smug with his feet on the table, two hands behind his head. And I went, oh, and I, I got my Olympic medal. I, went, I won an Olympic medal in, in the last Olympics in, in 2008. And he was just like, hmm. And then straight away I thought, oh my God, 
Olympic medals doesn't mean anything in America. He's not bothered. In England, everyone was like, whoa, it's an Olympic medal. And it was great. I was doing different events here and there because of this uh, award. But in America, this guy just snubbed it off as if it was nothing. And then I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I ever going to get a job out here with no qualifications? Olympic medal means nothing. <gasps> and then I got worried. But that didn't last too long. I went and applied for a job in a gym that did boxing classes and I got a job straight away. They couldn't believe that an Olympic boxing medalist wanted to come and work for them. So I got that job straight away, but after two months, I left there with one of the trainers who worked there. It was the manager, Kevin Watson. We'd done our own thing, a boot camp on the Santa Monica beach. We called Boxing Burn. After that, I invested the rest of the money that I made from boxing into a building in Santa Monica and then we opened a gym and we called it Box and Burn. Now at the time that we were doing this boot camp, me and my wife, we lived in a very, very small one bedroom apartment in West Los Angeles that cost a fortune. <laughs> and you know, I remember when we first moved there, we never had a bed. We were sleeping on the floors with uh, towels for pillows. I mean, just for a few days we went and got some, but you know, Times times were tough. It wasn't always go, go, go. Although it didn't feel like times were tough because we were absolutely loving the journey, loving the, the what we were doing, loving where we were. It was very exciting. And yeah, from there, you know, the gym opened. Sarah passed her NCLEX exam, got a job straight away in Santa Monica Hospital in the emergency room. And our lives just started to go like this. We were working hard, we were creating opportunities, we were taking these opportunities with both hands. It wasn't given to us, nothing in this life has been given to us. We've worked our asses off for it and we're still doing it right now, we both are. And that's the story, how we got here and how we've got this lovely house and this is in my garage, this is my YouTube studio for my other YouTube channel where I do boxing education. So now you might be thinking, well, come on, you told me, how can I get here? How do I get here? Well, I'm going to tell you that right now. So how do you get here if you're from the UK, if you are from Australia or anywhere else from around the world? And do I recommend that you come and move here? Well, let me answer that question first. Yes, I definitely do. Life is too short to, to not. Why, why would you not want to come and move to the other side of the world, move to a sunny place, experience different things in life? Now, I know a lot of people don't want to do that. And I understand that everyone's different. Living in the sun, living in a different country, experiencing all these other things. It's not for everyone. People like to get in their ways, have a, a system, have a routine with their life. And if that's for you, great. And if you're very happy with what you do, great. You've, you, you've, you've smashed it. Um, I can be pretty envious of people who are very happy with what they do with the simplest life ever. And you know, so if that's you, well done, you've smashed your life. But if you don't, and if you want to get out there, get out of your hometown, try something new, come and move to the other side of the world in a, a place where it's beaches and the weather's nice and it feels like you're living on holiday every single day. Because even though I've been here now when I'm shooting this in August, 2021, I've lived here for, I think nine years, it still lives, feels like a holiday all the time. Just being outside there, red hot, I'm sweating. It, it's great. So uh, anyway, if you want to come out here, how can you get out here? Well, the first thing is you've got to really want it. You've got, you've got to really want it. And again, nothing is given. If you think you can send me a message, Tony, I want to come and, and move out here. And I'm like, oh yeah, come on then, I'll sponsor you. You can come out here. You, you're wrong. You've got to work for it yourself. Now, by Google. Google is the best way to get out here. I get messages often, people, Tony, I want to come and move to America. Uh, what do I do? And I say, well, get in touch with an immigration lawyer who can help you on your way. Well, can you give me an immigration lawyer to get in touch with? I might Google it. And that's it, the end of. So that tells me that them people didn't want to come out here. Them didn't want to move out here and start life out here. You've got to really want it. So that's the first thing, is find an immigration lawyer. My immigration lawyer was called Candice Ackman from New York. Try and reach her, Google her, find out from her. Others 
hundreds, thousands of them in America that can help you or point, point in, the, in the right direction. But now, to get to America, you need to have certain credentials. We've just sponsored a couple, James and Joe Doyle from Leeds, Bradford area, who've come here and staying in my house right now, the, and they've got their green cards and they're living out here. Now, they got that because of Joe's credentials. She was a European women's MMA champion. Now, you're thinking, oh no, turn this video off, I'm not one of them, I'm not a, a fighter. No, well, there's other ways you can be here. Now, it depends what you want to do. If you are an expert in your field, then you can come out here. For example, if you are an IT guru and you want to move out here, you should get in touch with an immigration lawyer and get in touch with the IT company to see if they can sponsor you. Because America will let people in if they can do something that American can't do. Now, I get it. And Americans, Americans can do just about everything. But if you've got an extraordinary ability, if you've got a talent that stands out, yeah, you can get in. Now again, you might be thinking, oh no, I haven't got a talent. Well, you can work at one, you can figure out how you can get in, you can speak to the immigration lawyer, and the immigration lawyer might tell you, you know, you need to have this, 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 and this. And then you'd be thinking, well, I haven't got any of them. So let's just say you haven't got cr credentials, like if you wanna be a trainer out here, you need to have training tr credentials, like training in England boxing team, for example. Now straight away, you might be thinking, oh no, I haven't got that. I can't move to America. No. Why can you not get that? Oh, well, it might take six months. All right. What else are you going to do in six, for six months? So get the credentials. You might need to have newspaper articles of you in the newspaper. Oh, no, I have never been in the newspaper. I don't want to be in the newspaper. Well, it's not too late. Do it now. And there's a quote that I love that says, a year from now, you will wish you started a day. So if your big dream and your plan is to come move to America, move to Australia, which is amazing as well. If I couldn't get into America, I would have definitely moved to Australia. It's amazing, I love that country. If your big goal is to do that, you've got to plan it. You've got to figure out what you need to get there, then you need to get that thing. And if, you, if it's something that you think you can't get, you know, chances are you can. It just might take time. It might take six months, it might take a year, it might take two years. But you know, like I said, a year from now, you'll wish you started today. And I highly recommend Highly, highly recommend that you move away from where you are now. Now, you might be thinking, well, I've got too many commitments. Me, me, me parents are getting old. I get it. Your parents are going to get old. You know, it's, it's, that's a big thing. You know, you've got to move away from your family. And these are sacrifices you've got to make. But I tell you what, this day and age, we've got FaceTime that we can speak to anytime. I can pick the phone up now and I can talk to me mum as if she's right in front of us. And I do, I phone her all the time, or me sisters. What time is it now? I'm shooting this video, it's at like 2 p.m. here in LA. I can be at Sunderland, England, where I'm from, tomorrow, if I wanted to be. I can get up now, book a flight and be there tomorrow. If there's an emergency, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to be. Uh, but I'm just saying, for example, you can, you can do it. It's not like you're, that you're not going to see them again. It's not like you can't see them ever again. Uh, you know? But these are the commitments you've got to make. And it's not as scary as, as you, it might sound. And I tell you what, the pros for moving away way outweigh the cons for moving away. So yeah. That's it, I highly recommend it. That's my little story. I'm gonna be posting more stuff on here about this sort of stuff, about my lifestyle. And I just wanna see at the beginning of the video when I was showing you my uh, swimming pool and all that, I wasn't being cocky, I wasn't being big-headed or, or, or bragging about it. I can't believe it. I can't believe where I am from where I'm from. I worked on a catering trailer flipping burgers before I went to the Olympics. I never expected in a million years this. Like I said, it's like living on holiday out here. I'm so, grateful that I'm here right now. I can't believe it, I can't believe it. Me and my wife often talk, because she's from Sunderland as well, you know, how, how are we here? Sitting there on a morning drinking coffee, looking at the palm trees in the garden, seeing the pool, and it's like, what? Is this for real? Yeah, I recommend it. And you know what? It might not work for you, it might not work, but guess what? It might. <laughs>